Good morning students and welcome to the lecture 6 of this course partition of India in print media and cinema. When talking about pre-partition, we must uh, mention the different riots in the northern and in the central provinces that actually followed uh, the great Calcutta killing. So, it all started in Calcutta and uh, what was happening in a Hindu majority region was being retaliated in a Muslim majority region and so forth. It actually spread like a wildfire which could not be stopped beyond a point. So, next we see in November, November 1946 the case of Garmukteshwar by 1946-1947 the local riots were being tied with the wider political movements and demands. According to official government reports in the wake of the mass killings in Calcutta, in Noakhali and in Bihar, so in the eastern regions of India the whatever was happening had a repercussion as tension exploded in the Garmukteshwar fair or mela that was visited by people from western UP and from eastern Punjab. This was an organized Hindu crowd. So, once again we go back to the key word that we are using again and again in today's lecture the term uh, pogrom. We see that an organized Hindu crowd actually attacks and kills the Muslims and loots and destroys their shops and property in Garmukteshwar town. In spite of the police firing, the Muslims also retaliate. The monthly security intelligence report of the army headquarters for the UP area actually in the summary assessment, they uh, ask, they actually ask a very uh, important, a crucial question. Calcutta was revenged in Noakhali, Noakhali in Bihar, Bihar in Garmukteshwar. So, Garmukteshwar in, this goes on like a chain reaction. The Calcutta riots 16th of August 1946 which touched Bombay uh, September on and spread it to Noakhali in East Bengal by October, spread it to Bihar by end of October and then finally to Garmukteshwar UP by November had engulfed Punjab finally uh, from March 1947 onwards. Personal investigations and interviews reveal different pictures and different interpretations of these riots. They reveal that these riots were uh, all very well organized and they were preceded by organized rallies and inflammatory speeches, meetings that were meant to incite the common masses. In many of these rallies, the police and the military were indifferent. They were not playing any major role. They were not actually delivering the duties. They were negligent, right? And what is important is the role of the media. So, depending on the aggressor community in a particular case of riot, the newspapers, uh, depending on their political and communal backing, would play around with the information in terms of numbers. So, for example, if it was a Hindu backed newspaper, Congress backed newspaper, it would uh, actually give an underestimated or a, a smaller uh, number of deaths uh, for the Muslims and uh, vice versa for a Muslim newspaper. So, people were actually tampering and playing around with facts, either blowing up or diminishing the proportion of arsonage and massacre. So, the chaos were systematically being generated and uh, spread. So, for example, the Congress backed newspaper, the Hindustan Times, talks about the attack of a pilgrim train near Merit which caused the death and injury to a large number of uh, Hindu pilgrims. That is something that the Congress backed newspaper focuses. Now, according to UP Provincial Congress Committee report, the Harpur riot on 9th of November saw the Muslims of Shah Jahanpur and Dasna avenging Garmukteshwar by attacking the pilgrims. And the Hindus as a way of retaliating kill the Muslims in Harsan and Indragari. This is what a Congress backed newspaper such as the Hindustan Times has to say. 
when a tour of the Mirat district is actually uh, conducted by the INC general secretary Mridula Sarabhai and Nawaz Khan, uh, they are members of the Indian National Army, uh, they reveal another uh, facet of the entire incident. They reveal for example, the loss of lives and property caused by these uh, pilgrims who were mainly uh, Rotak and Gurgao Jats, the, the destruction, the havoc they had wreaked to the uh, local villages. A number of ex servicemen of INA were uh, also joining these extremist groups in order to carry out these arsonages with precision. So, what was worse is that in order to amplify the confusion, the extremists would often wear the Congress party's cap to defame the party. So, riots were actually justified in the name of uh, defending a community and in fact, they took the name of Gandhiji. So, in all these riots, we see political, communal, class caste, rivalry, all uh, motivating individuals and we s also see personal interests causing individuals to shift their political positions. So, riots as uh, Gyanendra Pandey would see are empty signifiers depending on a person's political leaning or communal identification, uh, a particular version would be supported against another version. So, multiple versions back to claim worthiness or unworthiness of a particular ideology. Garmukteshwar is no different from Bihar and in the same way it is no different from East Punjab just as Noakali is a reputation of Calcutta. So, according to the league account as propagated by Dawn newspaper, the victims of Garmukteshwar riots were Congressite nationalist Muslims that were generationally supporting uh, INC had uh, dwindled in number, they had uh, shifted their loyalty to uh, AIML in many cases. The Dawn newspaper says that the Congressite nationalist Muslims that came to attend the fair despite knowing about the Bihar riots faced the brunt of uh, this entire episode. The tragedy greatly declined the Muslim support in UP for an undivided India. So, the Muslims all the more started supporting the cause of a two nation theory, the two nation theory. Then we talk about the independence of India and Radcliffe line. Even though both the Indian government and the Congress have been shaken by the events of the direct action day, a Congress led temporary administration was created in September with Jawaharlal Nehru as the Prime Minister of a unified India. Lord Lewis Mountbatten was nominated as India's final Viceroy by British Prime Minister Attlee with the goal of overseeing British India's independence by June 1948. Balabhai Patel was one of the earliest Congress leaders that embraced India's partition as a solution to Muhammad Ali Jinnah's developing Muslim separatist movement. Jinnah's direct action campaign had enraged him. Uh, Patel was also aware that Jinnah had widespread Muslim backing and that an open battle between uh, him and the nationalists may uh, devolve into a Hindu Muslim civil war with very uh, dire consequences with disastrous results. So, Britain indicated by uh, early 1947 that they would hand up uh, the control uh, no later than June 1948. So, the new Viceroy Louis Mountbatten moved forward the transfer of power date providing fewer than 6 months for a mutually agreed upon plan for independence. The main Hindu and Sikh lands were allotted to the new India whereas the majority Muslim areas were assigned to Pakistan. The proposal envisaged par partitioning the Muslim majority provinces of Punjab and Bengal. So, the Radcliffe line actually uh, cut across these two provinces, 
Punjab and Bengal. The communal violence that precipitated the declaration of the Radcliffe line uh, was actually worse than the 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 independent it was worse than uh, what could be envisioned at that time. So, the actual split of British India between two new dominions was carried out according to the so called June plan or Mountbatten plan. The date of independence which was 15th of August 1947 was also proclaimed. Some of the primary points of the Mountbatten plan included. So, A in the Punjab and Bengal legislative assemblies six Hindus and Muslims would convene and vote for division. These provinces would be partitioned if a simple majority of either faction desired it. Next, Sindh and Balochistan were given the freedom to make their own choices. A referendum was to decide the fate of the northwestern frontier province and the Assam district of Silet. Next, by August 15, 1947, India would have gained independence. The possibility of Bengal gaining a separate Bengal union was ruled out. In the event of a partition, a border commission would be established. And then on June 2nd, India's political leaders agreed to the idea. It did not address the issue of the princely states, but on June 3rd, Mountbatten pushed them to join one of the two new dominions rather than remain independent. So, before we uh, actually uh, wrap up our first module discussion on the history of uh, partition of India, we need to discuss the partition of Bengal separately. We understand that in the pre-partition phase, Bengal became the bone of contention. So, besides religious factors, what other factors came into play need to be uh, examined. So, power struggle at play among different political groups to rule over the territory of Bengal invoked both class and caste related concern. For separate electorate for Hindus and Muslims after the foundation of the Muslim League had resulted in a communal rift without paying attention to the different layers that constituted the Bengali community. So, Muhammad Ali Jinnah claimed the whole of Bengal province to Pakistan because it had a Muslim majority population. So, we had the different schools uh, emerging in the case of the Bengal chapter. The Nazimuddin Akram Khan school backed by leading Islamic newspapers such as Azad, Morning News and Star of India was rooted to the Muslim League and they demanded for a single state of Pakistan as the future home for all the Indian Muslims. So, on the other hand we see that as a counter effect to the idea of the Muslim League's two nation theory, the patrons of Bengal nationalist cause demand for a separate Bengal union. Bengal union fortifies the idea of a collective Bengali jati. A focusing on linguistic and cultural unity of Bengalis over and above their religion based differences. So, the main proponents of an independent united Bengal were Sarath Bose and Kiran Shankar Ray among the Hindu organizers and Abul Hashim, uh, secretary of the Bengal Provincial Muslim League, uh, Fazlul Haq and Hussein Shahid Suravardi who were the premiers of Bengal at that time from among the Muslim leaders. They encouraged a departure from communalist politics and they instead stress on a unified Bengali identity. Their emphasis was the Bengali language as a shared identity rather than the Islamic community or religion. So, supporters of Sohrawardi such as Muhammad Ali Bogra and Tafazal Ali wanted United Bengal and emphasized the language movement. Bengal Muslim leaders such as Hashim Sohrawardi group fought for an integrated Bengal in segregation from the Pakistan of the northwestern frontier. This is because by including Bengal within its domain, within its domination, the Central Muslim League wanted to commercially exploit Bengal's topography and reinforce the Ashraf Atraf hierarchy within the Muslim community. 
formation of a united Pakistan would set up political, cultural and economic supremacy of the Urdu speaking and more affluent Muslims over the peasant and Dalit Bengali Muslim counterparts. So, in this respect, the Hashim Sauravardi school's proposal for the Union of Bengal aimed at a twofold advantage. On the one hand, so firstly, they would rule by the a united Bengal or a Union of Bengal would be ruled by the quantitatively major Bengali Muslims over the entire province of Bengal and not having to bow before the North Indian Muslim counterparts. And then again, uh, we see that while the Hindu enthusiasts such as Kiran Shankar Ray and Sarad Bose support this idea of a united Bengal, uh, because of their true feelings for uh, the Bengali na nationhood, at the same time there could be possibility of uh, uh, a kind of apprehension, the apprehension of passing of the East Bengal's jute based and other agricultural and industrial economy from the hands of the Bengali business community uh, to the West Pakistani Muslim bourgeoisie. So, the Indian nationalist leaders welcomed partition coalescing with the Hindu Mahatsavas idea of total exchange of population. In opposition to the idea of Bengal Union, Marwari businessmen such as the Birlas sponsored the Mahasabha and looked forward to a Hindu majority separate geographical political space. Elite Bengali newspapers such as Ananda Bazar Patrika, which was a staunch adherent of a united India, voiced the nationalists demand for a separate West Bengal. For most Hindu Bengalis, uh, mainly the refined class Bengalis called the Bhadralok, staying in a united Bengal would mean political and social dominance by the Bengali Muslims who were largely stereotyped as Dalit Hindu converts. So, a separate West Bengal was essentially a Babu class vision to prevent capsizal of power and hegemony not only in terms of religion, but also in terms of caste and class. Like we see in uh, Mountbatten papers, uh, W. H. J. Christie saying, I quote, so long as the Bengal Hindus have partition and Calcutta, they have all they want. Reunion with East Bengal would only put them again in a position of a numerical inferiority to the Muslims." Unquote. Finally, we need to talk about independence of India and Ratcliffe line and the Mountbatten plan. So, the Congress Working Committee approved the division proposal on the 3rd of June 1947. The Indian Independence Act was enacted by the British Parliament on July 18, 1947. Uh, completing the partition arrangements. The Government of India Act of 1935 was altered to give the new dominions with a legislative foundation. Pakistan petitioned for UN membership after being established as a new nation in August 1947 and was recognized by the General Assembly on September 30th, 1947. The current seat was retained by the Dominion of India, which had been a founding member of the United Nations since 1945. So, Radcliffe line was the demarcation line that separated the Indian and Pakistani sections of British India's Punjab and Bengal provinces. Uh, it was named after its architect, Sir Cyril Radcliffe, who served as joint head of the two provinces border committees. The demarcation line was published on 17th of August 1947 upon the partition of India. The western side forms part of the present Indo-Pakistan border, whereas the eastern side forms the part of the current India-Bangladesh boundary. Prior to independence, it was determined to divide India into two halves, one for Hindus and the other for the Muslims. Pakistan was handed the provinces of Sindh and Balochistan, both of which have a large Muslim population, about 70 and 90 percent respectively. The provinces of Punjab and Bengal, on the other hand, had just a little majority of Muslims. Uh, so, the Muslims made up uh, 55, a little more than 55 percent of Punjab's population and a little more than 54 percent of Bengal's population. Despite the fact that Jinnah intended these provinces, both of these provinces to become part of Pakistan and considering the emotions of Hindu and Sikh people, the Congress party did not approve of Jinnah's uh, demand. So, as a result, it was determined to cut through these provinces and divide them 
between two countries. And now it was hard to draw a clear line dividing the people by faith. In June 1947, two border commissions were established, one for Bengal and the other for Punjab and each commission comprised five members. So, Sir Seidel, the Muslim League's two nominees and the Congress Party's two nominees. Sir Seidel was given until the 15th of August to finish the delineation, but the final conclusion was not released until the 17th. In the view of the British, Sir Seidel was a neutral figure who could not be biased towards either India or Pakistan because he had no prior understanding of the country or its problems. Not only did the border commissioners have to deal with the people, but they also had to deal with roads and railway lines with electricity networks, irrigation projects and individual property holdings. So, in the process of uh, crossover, in the process of uh, transferring of population, exchange of population, more than a million people died and 12 million uh, more were displaced. Uh, so, uh, in the months after the division, massive population exchanges occurred between the two newly constituted nations. After partition, India had 330 million people. The West Pakistan had 30 million. After the lines were drawn, around 14.5 million individuals crossed the border, uh, hoping to find relatively a more protected existence in a host land with a majority from similar community and faith. Uh, the newly created administrations were totally unprepared to deal with such enormous migrations and on both sides of the border, immense bloodshed and killing ensued. Estimates of the number of deaths vary with lower estimates being towards 2 lakhs and the higher estimates uh, more than or almost 20 lakhs. In East Punjab, there were almost no Muslims, whereas uh, in the West Punjab, almost no Hindus or Sikhs survived. So, with this, we come to the end of this lecture and I will meet you again uh, with the next module and the next lecture. Thank you.